going? You're going to follow. Hey, can I hear some girlies? There we go, girls. There's some girls. There's some. Hello, <laughs> it's cold. It's actually been spitting all morning. So we've just had some lunch and waited until after lunch to come up here because it's been spitting, but it's been that kind of like icy spit, you know, so just like, just really cold and a bit grim and like stingy, you know, so that was great. <laughs> but it has stopped for the time being and we've got some pretty big jobs to get done. Uh, one of the first things we're gonna do, luckily, is in the greenhouse. <laughs> um, but we're going to start off some potatoes really early. So I know some people start them off in like January, not that early, but normally we wouldn't be planting our potatoes out until sort of mid March, maybe end of March, depending on what the weather looks like it's going to do. Uh, but we're probably going to wait until the beginning of April to get our potatoes out into the ground and into the pots that are going to be outside this year because uh, from just the, like, the pattern of the weather, it looks like we're going to have a really, really cold patch kind of halfway through to the end of March. So we're kind of pulling everything back. And so instead of doing like the main load of potatoes at that time, we're going to get some in early in the greenhouse, just three pots worth, get them started early and um, yeah, go from there and then delay planting the rest of the potatoes because the weather just looks like we're going to have a bit of a miserable March to be honest. And then we've got some other bits and pieces to do with the chicken house and I'm clearing a bit of space out in front of the shed for something which is happening in a couple of weeks time. So it's all go. It is all go. But let's start with the potatoes because I've got to mix up some compost. We're going to go a three way mix between manure, the well rotted manure that we get from, you know, in the bagged stuff. Uh, the peat free potting compost from Silver Grow and also our own compost. So we're going to do like a three way mix of that. So that has to be done in the wheelbarrow first and then we will get into the greenhouse and hide. <laughs> yeah, so chaps, March. After January going on for so long, the speed that February's flown by is a bit of a shocker. And suddenly we're in one of the busiest months of the year. I was looking at my seed sowing list yesterday and my March and April is just packed. <laughs> This week, I think we're going to focus on getting a bit of practical stuff done. And then I think we're going to have two weeks, basically, of just solid sewing. I'm going to have to clear some space at home. <laughs> right. But first things first, let's get these potatoes in. First thing on the list that I've forgotten today is my Hori Hori knife. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. It is sitting on top of the seed tray rack thing that we've got in the sitting room waiting to be oiled. I haven't oiled it and I've forgotten to bring it back. So I am reduced to the beautiful rusty scenario that is this. To open my bags of compost, it's far inferior. Starting off with some of our own compost, this is what we've just recently dug out of the third ready bin because we're in the process of turning the compost bins. This is just exactly as it's been taken out of the compost bin. We haven't sieved it or anything, hence it's got quite a lot of rough stuff in it, but it's going to be perfect for potatoes. And I'm going to mix this three ways, like I said, with the Silver Grow peat free compost from Melcourt and then some well rotted horse manure. And I think with that mix, the potatoes should be laughing.
are the three pots that I'm going to use. As you can see, not new purchases. <laughs> these are quite good pots actually. We found these outside a house um, that's having a lot of work done uh, just up the road, like on the walk to the allotment and they're having a huge like, front garden project done and a load of trees came in these pots and they were just stacked at the edge ready to go in the skip. So um, yeah, we are three potato pots richer. Normally in like from growing potatoes in pots, we do them in a larger pot and put three potatoes in each. But actually what we're gonna do with these ones is just have one potato in each pot. That's, uh, they could probably get away with two potatoes in this size, but we're not going to. We're just gonna plant the one. So not only did we forget the hori hori and I've been reduced to using the rusty knife to uh, open the compost bags. That is the least of my problems because I forgot the potatoes. <laughs> God, this is not a professional setup, chaps. Um, yeah, so I filled my lovely pots ready to plant the potatoes in the greenhouse, get them started off. I've forgotten my potatoes. They are still in the conservatory at home. So what I'm going to do is put these empty pots, or not empty, soil filled pots into the greenhouse and they can wait very patiently for the potatoes for tomorrow morning because, I mean, come on, I had a list, I had a list, top of the list, plant potatoes. <laughs> what an idiot, what an idiot. Okay, well, let's move on to the next job then. I'll stick these in the greenhouse, move on. Next job, chickens. Unfortunately, girlies, you're going to have to go inside while I mess around with your house. You are. Poor girlies, I know. You next, girls. You next. Hey, girlies. It's going to be a bit of action. There is. Okay. I would say big plans for the chicken run. We don't have big plans for the chicken run. You saw how quickly we put this one up. Um, it's just for the um, avian flu lockdown so that they're protected from the other birds. We've taken the cover off the top. It's now just the netting because we're about to take the whole lot down. Um, and that is because I've got a couple of things happening for the vlog number 156, so three year anniversary of doing this vlog. And for that, I need that branch. And at the moment, we've got stuff underneath. We've got a cold frame, well, Lily's hammock, as it's more often used as. <laughs> We've got the cold frame to move and also we put the chicken run slightly along that way. So we're going to change the aspect of the chicken run, which is going to be more practical anyway. Obviously, this one was just temporary measure because we felt sorry for them. Um, we're going to get that done today. I need to take this one down first, though, and then go and see what we've got at the wood pile. Because I've got more plans for over. The oh, God, there's so many things to do. When I was writing a list last week of like the big jobs, that's, that's a lot of big jobs to do. <laughs> Anyway, right, let's take this one down first and then we will rearrange.
old chicken house down. Next up for your high speed viewing of mum and I, we are clearing all of the wood that we've got stashed in the wood store behind the greenhouse out. We need to see what's what, what we've got in here. We've just been piling stuff up behind there. And I know that some of it's rotten and really not that useful. So we're just going to pull it all out, at least see what's good and what's not. Firstly, to see what I could possibly use to sort this chicken run out today. But also I've got things like fixing the fence to do. I've got gates to make. I've got tomato houses to put together, all that kind of stuff. And I'm sort of relying on this wood. And if I pull it out of here and find out that two thirds of it's rotten, well, that's not so great. <laughs> So we're going to get that sorted today. And the other reason that we're doing this is because I've got big plans for this section at the back of the greenhouse. It's quite a large area. Actually, it's about three metres deep and it's completely wasted as it is. And so that, chaps, is a project for next week. OK, well, we've got quite a lot of wood uh, that's been stashed behind there. Some small bits that aren't really that useful and some that I think will be good for fixing the edge of the plot, you know, because we're going to try and do some major works on the boundary fence to try and stop this badger situation. Uh, got lots and lots of old metal bits, which is from an old greenhouse that uh, disintegrated and also from a polytunnel that got got by the storm. And that is what I'm going to try and make the roof of the chicken house out of. So I don't know if this is going to work, but these are the curvy bits from the top of the old polytunnel. Unfortunately, they're all bent and twisted. I mean, you can see like this is just <laughs> pretty screwed up, but I'm gonna try and get them to be the roof. So overall, not too much rotten in there, actually. I'm pretty pleased. I've got no idea if this is gonna work. So there's a bit of trial and error to begin with, and we'll just see if we can get them because there's no holes in them. So there's nothing for me to really tie them to. Um, so I'm just going to have a go and see if I can get them to stay. I've put the side back on how it was before, which is with the little low mesh and the um, spikes in the ground to hold it up straight. And uh, we're just going to have a go. Ah, make it up as you go along. Planning's overrated. Yada, yada, yada. Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, got two priorities for the end result of this. Firstly, it's got to be chicken safe. That's combination of that they can't get out nothing can get in and that they are protected from the avian flu and secondly it's got to be mum safe because mum was having a terrible time with the last one she kept getting a hat caught and then tripping over the bottom and it was a nightmare so it's got to be mum safe and chicken safe and if we can get both of those things sorted I will be a happy bunny rabbit. <laughs>
definitely going to be an improvement though, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you can sort of look at it as being, you know, a permanent extension. Yeah. It's because we don't all, I mean, it's all right when they're allowed to come out and wander around, but then most of the time we don't want them to wander around and they eat it. <laughs> it's true. Well, I am not unhappy with that. It's definitely improvement, isn't it, girlies? <laughs> they're like jammed at their door. They're desperate to get out, poor little loves. It's not ready yet, girls. It's not ready. I'm going to put this piece uh, that was on their old chicken run, you know, like the little covered bit. It's really, really good in terms of a dust bath. They just seem to love it in there. So I'm going to put that inside the new arrangement and hopefully they're going to love it just as much in the new style. And then I've just got to get a door on here. Now the door is going to be more difficult because it's got to let mum in and out without the falling over. Uh, but it's also got to uh, be kind of secure at the bottom. In all likelihood, it'll probably go through a couple of incarnations before we get it right. But as long as it's uh, just netted over properly first, that's all that really matters. Isn't it, girlies? Huh? We've let them out just to, you know, check that, I don't know, it's all working. <laughs> I don't know, we've let them out. But they're incredibly happy because this is the area that we reseeded for grass seed before we knew we were moving this round. And uh, mum is now watching them just eat all of the grass seed. <laughs> if you leave it, girlies, you'll have grass to eat. Hmm? Lily's a bit bemused, but now we have this beautiful clear space, once I get that out of the way, uh, right underneath the branch that I'm aiming for. Woohoohoo! <laughs> girlies enjoying it. We will have the tarpaulin will come over to about that point. We've got to replace the tarpaulin on top, so that is in hand. But yeah, I think we're kind of drawing to a close today. Obviously, potatoes was a complete fail, but we've got them ready for the morning. Um, got that bit done. All of the wood that we've chucked out there is part of like the campaign to try and get the boundary of the allotment in a bit more order because the badgers are doing us a mischief. And the last job we've got to do before we leave today is rebury the onions because they've dug a load of them up. You know, the bed down here that's got the three onion sets in it that I sewed well, I put in, God, such a long time ago now, it feels. But the ones that came from Johanna, well, they've been doing fantastically well, the ones that did actually come up and didn't get nicked by the squirrels. And the ones that have survived all of that have now been turfed out, <laughs> or at least a good few of them have. So we've got quite a few just scattered on top of that bed. So we're going to rebury them. And uh, I think we're going to head off then, are we? Yeah, it is a little bit. Girl. Oh, also, we've got the guttering because I've got to sow some more peas. Hey, little more peas. More peas, girly. More peas. The onion bed. Um, you can see the craters already. So onions all coming up. Obviously, we had that bare patch anyway, but like there were onions here. There was an onion. Oh, there is an onion under there still, actually. It's just been buried. Excellent. I'm going to have to uncover some. But there was one here, and that's now just a crater. <laughs> And then there's a couple just scattered on the surface over there. So absolutely brilliant. I'm sure the onions are thrilled about this development. <laughs> I'm just going to flatten out the surface again and rebury them. It's a bit of a relentless game, this at the moment. Luckily, we have all of those pink panther sets that are waiting in the wings in the greenhouse at the moment. So any of these that don't, you know, uh, recover from this trauma... <laughs> Uh, I will infill with the pink panthers. These steel mesh frames should really keep anything off, be it foxes, badgers, whatever. Uh, but I didn't have any ends on this. Um, so when I put the frames back on, I will put ends on them and hope that they get a chance to really get their roots back in the ground before something else digs them up. Things like this is more of a nuisance than a disaster. I mean, these onions, I'm expecting to just bounce back from this. And the badgers, they're not after the crop, obviously. They're just after what's in the soil. And my onions happen to be where they're looking for worms. They're just turfing them out of the ground. And a lot of what they're rooting through is empty. But I know this is going to get very, very frustrating as the spring moves on. And we're starting to really start stuff off for the rest of the year. <laughs> so ideas on a postcard, please, chaps. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of chili pepper around the edges. I'm going to fix up my fence. Uh, yeah, uh, but I can't move them. I can't do anything about them physically in terms of moving the badges on because they are protected and they have got just as much right to be here as I have. So it's just strategies to try and keep them off our plot. <sighs> Anyway, last job of the day, taking the front off this compost bin because we're going to start moving the compost over and that just makes it a little bit easier. And uh, then we're going to head off and I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I think this is, this is the, well, there are no labels on these ones because this is them. So we want three of these. Yeah, I know, because all the others have got their labels in. That's the only okay. One so, there are three. so there's the three. Ready to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right, lovely. They're on, they're on their way. Now let's try and get them in the basket so we don't forget them again. <laughs> and here we are again. This time we have both the hori hori and the potatoes. <laughs> it's a step up from yesterday. Hey Lil, you're waiting for us already, chicken. Are you? Come on in. Where's those girlies? Where are you girls? Are you inside? <laughs> what are you doing? Is it too cold, girlies? <laughs> there we are. I can see a little face. I can, I can. Girlie, girlie, girlie. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Morning. So we evened this bed out last night. And that one. And that one. But that one's got through, maybe. Well, despite putting more at the gate, uh, they've been back in. So we're going to have to really think about this, aren't we? I don't think they've touched the top one. Though. No? The one up here. Maybe they just climbed over this side. Oh, no, they've been in here. Oh, have they? Pants. I know, girls, we're coming. We'll let you out in just a sec. We're just doing badger watch. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this one was flattened too, so. Mm. Oh, it got, it feels really cold this morning. I'm just checking to see. You see, it only got to 4.2 last night. Feels way colder than that. Even now it feels colder than that. What's the temp now in here? 8.1. Oh, it's cold. We're not gonna be up here for an enormously long amount of time today. I'm just going to... Oh, I've just knocked the chair over. <laughs> I'm just gonna plant the potatoes in there, get that sorted, and we're also gonna measure the perimeter of the plot because we're gonna to have to do something about it. We really are. Um, some of the wood, we're not going to sort that yet because as I said we've got like a project to do around the side of the greenhouse around there where we cleared the wood out from yesterday um but that's going to be next week because um we've got some pallets hopefully hopefully got some pallets which is going to make that job happen but yeah boundary fence we've got to do something about it because I mean at the moment those badges they're just digging up like the empty beds which is which is fine it's annoying it's annoying when they get into one of the beds that's actually got something growing in it, like, you know, the onions yesterday and obviously those poor cabbages. Sorry, you're, I'm just adjusting you. Obviously, like the onions and the, uh, not carrots, we don't have any carrots growing, uh, cabbages. When they get in there and turf them out, that's really annoying. They've destroyed the rocket bed at this end of the plot, which is the one that we're going to have the potatoes in. Once we start planting stuff out, if they're still digging up, it is going to be a pain. And we can tell that we're now back on their route again because they've, made a whole load of latrines along the path at the top so I mean you're never going to be able to stop badgers in the sense of actually getting rid of them and you wouldn't want to either like they've got perfect right to be here it's just we really want to interrupt their pathway because if they come in to look for something like sweet corn beetroot which are their favorites you know anything with a really high sugar content they will break through almost anything to get at it like you just don't have a chance but at the moment I think we're just on their path and they're just using our allotment like looking for grubs and stuff it's not like a destination <laughs> for them so if we can just block off making it easy for them to just walk in 
that's what we're aiming to do and i'm going to have to do a bit of research because we need to do something about it because it's not good at the moment it's not good anyway potatoes come with me little chaps Something else I managed to do yesterday, which is brilliant, is snap um, the bit that attaches my camera to the tripod up here. <laughs> um, I think mainly it's because I've been keeping it up here. I used to carry it backwards and forwards uh, from like home when I was coming up here, but then I just thought I'll just leave it in the shed. But I think it has been so cold. We've had that really, really cold weather and I think the plastic just hasn't coped. So it's basically snapped off. Um, so I could just about hang it, but it keeps falling off. Which is incredibly irritating so uh just for the rest of this vlog i'm going to order a new one when i get home it's such a cheapy thing you know but i'm going to order a new one when i get home but just for this vlog you're probably going to find some interesting camera angles like um being stuffed behind the bubble wrap etc etc because yeah <laughs> god this is a professional episode this one isn't it Ooh. <laughs> bring on gardeners world right where's those potatoes so I don't know if you remember um, when I was talking about chitting the potatoes. Sorry, I'm just getting it. It's just getting it. It's crouching here. Right. When I was talking about chitting the potatoes, I was talking about them having a bum end and like a top end, which is something you don't necessarily normally see that quickly with potatoes, particularly if you're only ever eating them, like you don't tend to recognise that they've got a top and a bottom. <laughs> But I've got one of like one of these potatoes. So this is Red Duke of York that I'm putting in here, and you can see really clearly on this potato. I'm telling you how it like tapers at the bottom, so you get like a slightly pointier bottom and a roundy top, and on the top is where all the eyes are. So you've got all of the growth points at the top there, and nothing at the bottom. Yeah, so it's a very nicely demonstrated upright potato. <laughs> So that's going to be planted in the ground upright like that with the strongest growing tips just pointing straight upwards which way they're going and when you're chitting them if you put them in you put them upside down they start chitting at the bottom we'll just turn them over there is not a catastrophe right, let's plant these so like i say these are the red duke of york potatoes and uh, we're actually only going to sow one in each of these pots i'm just going to put that straight in with its sprouts pointing upwards. Some people um, like to break off some of the sprouts so that there's only one or two. So like on this one, we've got one main one there, there's one coming there, there's one coming there. Uh, that's about it, but there's only three on there. It's not too bad. Sometimes you'll find you'll get a potato that goes completely mad and you'll get like a whole load of eyes, five, six on there. Sometimes then you might want to break a couple off, but I mean, three eyes, it's absolutely fine. When you put them in and then you cover them up, make sure you don't push right down on top of them like like that, because you'll probably break off the eyes. So just be a bit a bit gentle, a little bit gentle with the potatoes. Yeah, so we're only doing one per pot. A bit of an experiment. Um, we've previously done them in bags, as you know, like the last two years we did bags. First year, quite successful. Second year, really not successful because at the time we needed to keep earthing them up was the time that mum was really unwell and we didn't have a car and I couldn't get any compost up here and it just basically didn't didn't happen so we ended up trying to grow com uh, trying to grow uh, potatoes sorry in like three inches of compost it was um it wasn't great and then we had that incredible hot weather and they cooked so overall uh, that wasn't great but <laughs> this year, to try and see how they really grow in pots, we're just putting one in each of these pots so we can really see, like, this is what one single potato develops into. They're not large pots, and we'll see. And these are going to stay in the greenhouse now for, well, until the weather cheers up, because at the moment it's pretty miserable. Red Duke of York, like I said, that's the one that we've got the most of this year. Although we've got quite a lot of other different varieties to try, this is, like, this is like basically our favourite potato and uh, we've got the three that we're going in here nice and early we might put another couple of pots in here later on we're going to have a whole bed or at least half a bed of the red dukes outside and it's traditionally an early potato so quite small but they make the best jacket potatoes if you leave them in as a main crop so basically it's a potato of the gods <laughs> and we've got three in so woo 
Right, next up I'm going to measure the outside of the plot, which is going to be a bit of a task because it's quite large and we've only got a very small tape measure up here, so it's going to be a little bit um, bitty. But I want to have some sort of idea because I need to get some, some mesh and I need to know exactly how much I need because it's going to be not a cheap activity. But then, but then it's like not a cheap activity, but then everything that we put into the allotment, if it's just going to get dug up and destroyed, well, if you're going to spend your money on anything, it may as well be defences. Right, I'll just water these in and go and get the mini tape measure. Actually, I'll just move them into place before I water them. the camera's the wrong way around but it is 11 that way 32 that way so the kind of thing i think we're going to have to do so this is our neighbor's plot like on the other side of the path and they've got so what that's like the one meter 20 really wide steel mesh it's really i mean it's not it's not the best fence in the world but it's consistent all the way around the plot and they've got a proper gate on it and all the way up here, can you see like the digging that's going on up there? That's all badger latrines. So they obviously come down this way and they've got mulch. They've mulched all their beds. They've got no digging in their plot. So I think what we're gonna have to do is just get a really consistent fence because we've got chicken wire mostly around the plot, but there's some pretty big holes and it also doesn't come up very far. So like our top corner here, where I moved the beds to and we've got the uh, pallets, is all pretty secure but when you come down this way this is the fence that we've got most way across the plot i don't know if you remember me uh fixing this up uh, as i've gone but it's really only very short i mean that's what just up to my knee height so what i'm thinking is not replacing the whole fence because that would just be madness but to get some of that steel mesh and, and use this structure, but have it come up higher and then wire the top. Wiring the top also, I've been told, makes a difference for foxes. Where badgers will just push through, foxes like to jump up on the thing and down the other side. And if you've got a loose top, rather than having a rail across the top, the foxes don't like it because they don't want to do like a woo straight over the top. So that would be double whammy. Um, and then the big thing is getting proper gates because at the moment, our gates are not proper. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop talking about it in a moment, but this was our whole bed or a whole half bed of rocket and it's all been taken out by the badges. We've just got that tiny bit left. So I'm gonna go and get some seed trays and I'm gonna go and start some more off. Wow, this is a right old mess. Look, the swing seat and the cushions and everything. But what I am looking for in here is these. 
which are the only cell trays we've got left. They are the polystyrene ones that, um, I mean, mum had them when I was a kid. We have had them for such a long time. Now they're all a bit broken and crumbly, but they are so good. <laughs> and last year, a couple of years ago, we bought some of those really flimsy green plastic ones, which were just useless. And we finally just got rid of all of them last year. So we're kind of, we, this is all that we've got, but I need to get some spring onions in and some beetroot and all those kind of things, which are multi-sown. I need cell trays for them. I don't need cell trays for them. That's a bit dramatic, but I like to grow them in cell trays. So uh, yeah, I'm going to salvage out these old chaps and take them home and we'll get some things sewn. Ooh, March sewings on the go. Pleased to say that the girlies uh, have resumed residency in the dust Thank bath you, under the little shelter. Hey girls, is it nice? Hey, being cute. Our beautiful Cavalier Nero is just starting to go to flower here. You see where it's getting its little flower stems and one in the top here. So what we'll do next is take all these big leaves off, which are still um, like the proper Cavalier Nero, and then we will leave the rest of it for flower spikes because they are delish and a little bit like like kaylee tasting purple sprouting broccoli or something like that you know the type absolutely delish they're all starting to go at the same time actually but uh yeah these have been excellent service this year still got quite a few seeds on there yeah we have got loads left to pick which is good yeah. something else that we need to pick so we've got um what's it called pak choy under there that has gone to seed and that's not as useful it's not like the cavalinero where you get a whole second flush of joy from it when it starts going to flower uh, these ones just need to be picked off so we're going to take them home for lunch and then i think we're just about done here got my seed trays took the guttering home yesterday for peas i think that's it you've Bit got of... enough compost haven't you at home yeah i've got enough compost at home i think yeah i'm sure i have um yeah okay picking leaving let's try and get in here <laughs> this is good isn't it i love not having a tripod um yeah so you see it's when it starts getting that can you see me at all ah. It's when it starts getting that stem. It's still totally edible, the whole lot. But once it really does start to flower, this bit at the bottom will get really tough. So yeah, I'm just going to take all of these home and have them for lunch. Mm. Actually, I don't know if you can still hear me, so I'm going to speak up. But something to note about this, this is just the plain green variety. I said before that um, it survived an awful lot better than the purple one that I've been growing up there. Um, this has just been outside. I know I've had this cover on it recently, but that's really just been because of the birds trying to stop them eating it. It's been outside all winter and been absolutely fine through all that horrific weather we had. But it's still beautiful. This is great. I will be sowing this late again next year for outdoors. Might try and get some in. Might try and get some in the polytunnel too, but for an outdoor veg at this time of year, it's great, isn't it? Isn't it? I am putting the cover back over because 
depending on what the weather's going to do, because they're coming into their um, like flowering stage, they get a bit desperate. When you chop them off, hang on, I picked one out here a minute ago. I can't find it now. But one of those ones that I just picked off there was like a big multi-stemmed chep because I'd already picked out the flower spike earlier. So I've left those in rather than hoiking them straight out and we might get another something from them. You never know, even if it's just tiny leaves for a bit of salad. It's worth it, isn't it? It's not like I need the bed space for anything. I can't even get it ready and mulch it because of them badgers and the foxes. It's not just badgers because we've got fox poo over there. So, mmm, baddies all round. Baddies all round, although. I am pretty pleased with those. Yes, they're flower spikes, but they're nice looking leaves. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Okay, yeah. Oh, look, look at this for a spring basket. Even though the weather is miserable as all sod. Look at that. <laughs> we have got daffodils, eggies, a little bit of salad, a bit of pak choy. Very nice combo. See you in a minute. <laughs> right, I'm just abandoning those there. I'm back. Memory, not my strong point. Uh, one of the other things I needed to pick up while I was here was some more pots for the cucumbers. You know, the early cucumbers. They are absolutely romping away and they're ready for uh, go up again. What was it, only two weeks ago that I potted them up. So just run back, grab some pots and then we're off. I know girls, I'm back. I forgot the pots. I did, yeah, I know. Oh, you all right there, Lil? You all right, Button? I forgot the pots, Bubba. I did, I forgot the pot. Okay, so the size that they went into last time was like size up from that. So I'm gonna need maybe these. I think that'll do. Two of them. Perfect, and actually I need some sticks. Pants, the sticks are inside the shed, and mum has the keys to the shed, so I won't be getting any sticks. Another thing to add to the list for another day. <laughs> okay, right girls, yep, I think that's me done. It is girlies, yep, done, done, done. See you in the morning. Bye girlies, love you, love you. Balancing act. Okay. Okay, bit of a balancing act. Let's hope there's not too many of those spiders left in uh, these boxes, otherwise, because they're all going to be inside my jumper. <sighs> and we're home. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks this week, hasn't it? Yeah, a lot of um, toing and froing and backwards and forwardsing. But actually, I think I've got more done than I think I have because actually we've got the potatoes in, which is excellent, even though it was a bit delayed. Uh, so that's fantastic to have started them off. Um, as I mean, you saw that those pots were like only two thirds full. Well, obviously, as the potatoes grow up, I will fill up those um, pots right to the top. Uh, so, yeah, that's started off, which is good. Dem Girlays have ended the week with a better outdoor run than they started the week off with which is pretty good uh, that so, so i wouldn't probably have shifted that one because obviously it was just makeshift we just wanted to give them some sort of outside space uh, even though it's covered it's funny really because their house they've got like their actual little house that they sleep in inside the bigger cage so essentially the outside bit isn't that different from that but i think just for them they feel like they're being let out 
when they can go into that little area. So I think it's quite important, even though it's nowhere near like what the old girlies had when they could just have sort of like free range of the allotment. A couple of advantages over how the new setup is compared to the old one. Well, firstly, it's higher, so mum's not going to be tripping over and catching her hat and, and falling over, knocking over the hyacinths uh, when she's going in and out. So it's made it much easier for her, which is thumbs up. Also, their uh, metal bin, which uh, where we keep their uh, layer pellets and their general food and treats and things, so it's sort of rat defences in that metal bin. Uh, that's now inside their extra run. It's going to make it so much easier when we're cleaning out the cage and sorting out their food and everything, because before we were having to run like round the outside of that bit of netting um, to kind of fill up their food bowls and stuff. So that's another tick. Also, I'm really pleased that we got to use the old bits of that poly tunnel. Um, they've just been lying under that wood pile. I knew I was going to use them for something, but I just didn't know what. And now I've used them. So, um, yeah, pretty pleased about that. Uh, the other thing I need to do is to apologise for uh, the enormous amount of badger whinging that I've done on this vlog. Um, it's just starting to get to me a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, I whinged a bit this week. I'm sorry about that. I will endeavour to just get on with it, stop moaning and sort the fence out. I promise. I will keep the badger whinge to a minimum next week, I promise. But talking of badgers, you know, I said that the, their favourite things is like sweet corn, beetroot, that kind of thing. I'm going to sow some beetroot. So I brought my trusty polystyrene tray home with me that these are just decades old. They're brilliant. Uh, you can see that they do, they do crumble a bit. Um, but they're still just as usual, like their, their structural integrity when a bit that falls off the side uh, isn't uh, damaged or anything. So they're still absolutely perfect. They've got the beautiful big wide holes in the bottom so that you don't have to get your fingers stuck up and cut in the little plastic holes. Uh, yeah, I love these things. And I am going to sow some beetroot. My normal bog standard like red beetroot that I grow, uh, there's this one Detroit Rubridus and there's also Detroit Crimson Globe. Both of them excellent tasting um, beetroot. They're both kind of come down from uh, bolt hardy, so they're really good bolt resistant varieties. But I actually don't have that many seed left in this packet. So I'm going to top up my red beetroot with Crosby's Egyptian, which I tried last year and I thought it was a really nice beetroot. Also doing Kyogia, like the standard magical stripy number do that every year. I think everybody does that every year. It tastes great. I mean, it's a really good beetroot, but I mean, its main stunning properties is just it looks phenomenal <laughs> when you like, oh, it's just, a, it's just a beautiful thing. And cutting into it is exciting every time, doesn't matter how many times. <laughs> Sorry, beetroot excitement. I'm also going to sow some golden beetroot and I am not wild about the flavour of the golden beetroot. Like if I had to choose between the red and the golden, I would go red every time because it's just got a much deeper, earthier flavour. However, last year we got really into doing uh, beetroot carpaccio, which is like um, very finely sliced, completely raw beetroot with kind of a mustard dressing and balsamic vinegar. And it's just absolutely delicious. And, and the sweetness of the golden beetroot with the earthiness of the, of the red one just really it just sang, it was just magnificent. So I'm gonna do a row of these two. So I'm gonna get those three in. I am sewing them multi-sewn in these cells. I could easily just sew them in the normal green trays that I sew most things into. Um, but I tend to, the things that I sew in those green trays, I tend to kind of sew en masse and then prick out into individual pots and then plant them out. Whereas with these guys, I'm multi-sewing them. So when they go into the ground, they're actually gonna stay in their clumps. I'm gonna sow three or four seed to each cell in here and then let them get reasonably large, but they're going to go straight from this tray into the bed. What you're doing with the multi-sewing is really working with the plant's natural tendency for competition. What you end up getting is a longer picking season from a smaller amount of space. So there we go, beetroot in, Beautiful, fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to put these out in the conservatory. They don't need a lot of heat. The same way that the peas and the onions did that are now in the uh, greenhouse up at the allotment, they germinated absolutely fine. So these are gonna go out there. But before I do that, in, this, in the end that I haven't put the beetroot in, I'm gonna sow some spring onions. I was distressed to find that I actually don't have any Lilia, which is my like 
normal straight to favorite spring onion which is like a purple one but i do have but i do have north holland which is a redder version i didn't have a great deal of success with this last year i've got to be honest but i have a packet of it so i'm going to get those in and i'm also going to just do evergreen bunching which is you know just like a standard white one i normally do lisbon and lilia so this is a bit of a departure uh, once I've sewn these, I will race out and buy some Lilia and uh, White Lisbon for the next sewing. Because these are things that I'm going to sew every month, basically, from now until August. I've actually got less compost than I thought I had here, so I'm not going to do the peas today. And I'm also not going to pot up my cucumbers, even though they're looking pretty snazz. Hold on. For these beauties, it's got little cucumbers on it. <laughs> yeah so it does definitely need potting up but anyway so i'm gonna uh, nip up to the allotment this week grab some more compost and then pot these little babies up yeah. oh just look at that flower isn't that jolly so yeah chaps that is the first of the march sewing i've got an absolute hell ton of things to sew this month but i'm going to start that big time next week it's going to be things like melons and all of that kind of stuff the, the exciting things <laughs> So yeah, that is going to be next week. Oh, don't forget, next Monday, uh, Monday the 13th, it is uh, Potty Mouth. I'm going to be on Potty Mouth with Tony C. Smith and Steve Greenside Up. And I don't know who the other guest is going to be, but there will be four of us chatting stuff. If you've got any questions, come on there and uh, come and say hi, because it's normally quite jolly. Anyway, chaps, it is March. I can't believe it. We are going straight into the busiest month of the year. Shame the weather is pants, uh, but it does give me a chance to kind of get quite a lot done before everything's just covered in plants. Uh, we've got that wood pile to sort out next week and hopefully, I've got my fingers crossed, the school next door, I think they're gonna give us a whole load of pallets that they've got stashed behind their bins. So that's gonna be uh, for the project behind the greenhouse. So yeah, we've got that to do next week and I think there's snow on the forecast. <laughs> I don't want, I love snow, you know I love snow. I get very excited about it, but not in March. Not in March. December, January, maybe even the beginning of February, I'll be woo woo wooing about it, but not much. So it's cheers, chaps. It is a Monday night cheers to those of you on Patreon. Oh yeah, for Patreon, um, our Discord that we've got, uh, I've been absent for a couple of weeks because I could not log in on my computer. It just absolutely refused. So all I had was on the phone and I find it really difficult on the phone. So I'm back on the Discord. <laughs> if you were wondering where on earth I've been, I've been trapped out of it, but I'm back, I'm back. Yep. So cheers to my incredible Patreons who uh, are entirely responsible for these videos being made every week. And then it is a huge cheers to everybody else out there. I hope the weather is better where you are, that you don't have snow and that your sewing is commencing with joy. Cheers, chaps. <laughs> <laughs>